So we forgot the roof to our sunshade. So we ended up taking the walls and putting them on the top. It worked. It worked. There's a problem with almost every beginner telescope out there, and I think it's keeping a lot of people from enjoying this hobby. The eyepieces that come with most beginner telescopes are terrible. This video is my attempt to fix that. Hey everyone, I'm John Reed, author of 110 Things to See with a Telescope, and this is Learn to Stargaze. All right, so here's our setup. We've got three telescopes. We've got a five inch SCT, a 102 millimeter short tube refractor, and an eight inch Newtonium. Our targets are exactly 100 feet downrange, and every target has been sized approximately to scale as if you were viewing it through the telescope. Okay, one thing to note is that these tests won't do a good job simulating clarity and contrast. What we're really doing here is showing you how the views change between the different types of eyepieces and the different types of telescopes. You really need to be present at the eyepiece to get the actual experience. A YouTube video will not do it justice. If you want to try these eyepieces before you buy them, go to a star party. These eyepieces are extremely popular and you'll find several observers at any event that will be happy to let you try theirs. And a big thank you to All Star Telescope for sponsoring this video. This is a $200 telescope from Costco. And this is a $3,000 carbon fiber telescope from Explore Scientific. Both of these telescopes have 102 millimeters of aperture, and both of these telescopes have a focal ratio of about f7. And with the right eyepiece, both of these telescopes will offer nearly identical views of deep sky objects. All Star Telescope just sent me six premium eyepieces, and we're going to test them out. I've also got the two most common eyepieces that come with beginner telescopes, so we'll get to see how they compare. But showing how different eyepieces perform over YouTube is extremely challenging, so in this video we'll be building an eyepiece testing facility at Stargaze Nova Scotia. But first, what are eyepieces and why do you need them? Let's see if I can explain this in 15 seconds. Note that this is massively oversimplified. A telescope's primary mirror or lens collects light. An image is formed where all the points of light converge. This image is called the focal plane. If you put your eye here, you don't see anything. But why is that? Well, among other things, the image is simply too large. It fits on a camera sensor, but not on your eye. You need an eyepiece to concentrate that image so that it fits into your eye. In a minute, I'm gonna show you how objects appear through different eyepieces of different focal lengths and different fields of view with different telescopes. But first, we'll need to understand eyepiece specifications. These definitions are pretty boring, so while I'm going through these as fast as I can, I'll put some footage of us building our eyepiece testing facility on the left of the screen so you don't get bored. First, let's talk about focal length. You use the eyepiece focal length written on the eyepiece itself to determine the magnification of your unique telescope eyepiece combination. Magnification is the focal length of the telescope divided by the focal length written on the eyepiece. In other words, the higher the focal length of the eyepiece, the lower your magnification. Note that higher magnification is not considered better since increasing magnification does not increase the resolution of the telescope. Resolution, your ability to see fine details, is solely determined by the aperture of your telescope. Eye relief is how far your eye needs to be from the eyepiece to see the image. Cheap eyepieces require the eye to be very close, while better eyepieces allow the eye to be further away. 12 millimeters to 15 millimeters is typical, but if you stargaze with glasses, high eye relief up to around 20 millimeters is ideal. Apparent field of view, or simply field of view, is how much of your vision is taken up by the view of the sky. A small field of view, say 50 degrees, and you'll see that black circle around your targets a 68 degree field of view, and the circle is larger. You'll see much more sky. Ultra wide angle eyepieces range from 80 degrees to 100 degree fields of view. In these eyepieces, with your eye placed just right, you might not be able to see the sides of the eyepieces at all. Divide apparent field of view by the magnification you're using, and that tells you how much of the sky you're looking at. For example, say you're looking at the moon at 100 times magnification and your field of view is 50 degrees your view of the sky will be 0.5 degrees across. Since the moon is 0.5 degrees across, it will completely fill your field of view. Most eyepieces have a barrel size of 1.25 inches. 
These generally fit all telescopes, big and small. Larger telescopes with two inch focusers generally come with an adapter to accommodate this smaller size. Premium telescopes typically accept two inch barrel eyepieces. Some beginner telescopes like the Omni 102 or the Celestron SCT like this C5 can be upgraded to two inch barrels by adding a two inch visual back and a two inch diagonal. Here are some other specifications you might see. If the eyepiece is labeled parfocal, that means that you can switch between eyepieces without having to refocus the telescope as long as all the eyepieces are in the same series. Celestron's XL series is an example of a parfocal set of eyepieces. Now let's talk about coatings. Premium eyepieces often have special coatings to increase light transmission and reduce glare. This is very obvious at night if you're switching between eyepieces. Some eyepieces simply have far better contrast than others. Eyepieces typically come with several features that you might not even realize they have. First, there's the threads. Eyepieces are all threaded. They're threaded so that you can screw in filters like moon filters, blue filters for Jupiter, and UHC filters for Nebula. These are typically the only three filters that I use for visual observations. Then there's the eye cups. Typically, these can be folded down or up or even removed depending on if you're wearing glasses or dealing with background glare. Some premium low focal length eyepieces are actually high focal length eyepieces with a built-in Barlow. And the Barlow can actually be removed, leaving a low powered eyepiece behind with a two inch barrel. Then there are multi-barrel eyepieces. Some eyepieces can fit different size barrels. For example, this 10 millimeter Hyperion eyepiece can fit either a 1.25 inch focuser or if you take this piece off, the eyepiece will fit into two inch diameter barrels as well. Most eyepieces also come apart for cleaning, which can be done with a standard lens cleaning kit from your local camera store. Most premium eyepieces are also waterproof. If you stargaze from national parks on the East Coast, you'll know why it helps for an eyepiece to be waterproof. Here on the East Coast, after a few hours of observing, your gear will be covered with dew. That's also why I recommend getting a hardcover version of 110 things to see with a telescope. It's much hardier in dewy conditions. Note that zoom eyepieces are also becoming quite popular. These allow you to change the focal length of the eyepiece without changing the eyepiece. This is a Plossel, named after George Plossel. A basic Plossel is typically the first upgrade most beginners make. Inside there are four lenses. Typically these provide about a 50 degree field of view. But be aware there are a lot of cheap Plossels on the market. The ones that are decent seem to look something like this. On the other end of the spectrum, we have the Telview Ethos series, which can run upwards of $1,000. But typically, I've only seen these on very large telescopes like Obsessions or at observatories like the BGO. But there's a sweet spot for awesome eyepieces between an entry-level Plossel and the $1,000 Ethos. And these six eyepieces from All Star Telescope fall into this category. Picking two of these eyepieces, one at a high focal length for general observing and another for zooming in on planets will take your stargazing to the next level, regardless of what type of telescope you might be using. All right, let's go through them. This is the 24 millimeter Teleview Panoptic, which has a 68 degree field of view. For a small telescope, this is pretty much as good as it gets. I've been using this eyepiece for the past week and I have to say this is my new favorite eyepiece. Next, we have the 9mm Nagler eyepiece and the 5mm Nagler, named for Al Nagler. These high-powered eyepieces use seven lenses to give you an amazing 82-degree field of view. The challenge with these is that they only have 12 millimeters of eye relief, so they probably won't work well with glasses. But for high magnification on objects like planets and globular clusters, these eyepieces offer unparalleled views. Telview eyepieces are like the Apple computers of the eyepiece world. They're typically about twice the price of the competition, but in reality, there is no competition. These eyepieces are known to transform your stargazing experience. To quote the late Terence Dickinson, when talking about these eyepieces, he said, expensive? Yes, but if you want a smile every time you look in the eyepiece, that's the answer. And finally, All Star Telescope sent me these three Bader Planetarium Hyperion 68 degree eyepieces. We've got the 24 millimeter eyepiece, a 10 millimeter eyepiece, and a five millimeter eyepiece. We'll go into more detail on these eyepieces in a minute. Speaking of All Star Telescope, a big thank you to them for sponsoring this video. They're located here in Canada, but they ship worldwide. 
Americans should definitely take a look at their website because as you may know, the US dollar goes a lot further in Canada. Check them out at allstartelescope.com. All right, let's quickly run through each of these eyepieces and show you how the images appear, at least through an iPhone camera, which as you'll see, has its limitations. First, here are the three telescopes with a standard eyepiece, ones that come with a beginner telescope like the Celestron Omni 102. Here you can see how each telescope orients the image. The SET on the right has an image erect diagonal which flips the image so that it's not mere reversed. The refractor in the middle currently has a regular diagonal and so it displays a mere reversed image. The Newtonian rotates the image 180 degrees, basically upside down, but since we typically use a Newtonian from the side, the image will appear a bit lopsided. Fortunately, none of this really matters because there's no such thing as upside down in space, right? Moving over to the 24mm Hyperion, we can see that this is a wonderful eyepiece in any telescope. We actually 3D printed custom iPhone adapters for these eyepieces. If you'd like a copy of the 3D printer STL files, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash learn to stargaze. Here's the 10mm Hyperion. You can easily see that the magnification has more than doubled as we decrease the focal length, and it looks like the image quality remained the same. Here's the 5mm Hyperion, doubling the magnification again. It was pretty windy while we were filming. The high magnification really amplified every little bump. You can also see some reflection in the glass. We were planning to reshoot this part, but then this happened. Nova Scotia is grappling with historic flooding as torrential rains sweep across the province this weekend. Well, here is the one of the only roads to learn to stargaze, and it is out. Anyway, back to the eyepieces. Here is the 24mm Telview Panoptic, regarded as one of the best eyepieces on the market today. Please excuse the reflection of the camera in the glass, that would not happen at night. And then we have the 9mm Telview Nagler. Now here I think the iPhone and the eyepiece are disagreeing about something because we are seeing serious pincushion distortion. These eyepieces have an amazing 82 degree field of view. We see this pincushioning effect in the 5mm eyepiece as well. Now these are both fantastic eyepieces, but again, in this case, the iPhone simply can't handle the wide field without distorting it. So after using these eyepieces for the last couple weeks, I have a few takeaways. The main thing I learned is that eyepieces are a very personal preference. A lot of things are at play, using them with or without glasses. Do you like the eye cups flipped up or not? How close do you like to put your eye to the glass? Also field of view. Do you like the focused yet immersive views of the 68 or the floating in space views of the 82 degree ultra wide field eyepieces? I found that I kept coming back to the same two eyepieces almost no matter what telescope I was using. And I'll let you know which two in a minute. Lesson number two, certain eyepieces pair well with certain telescopes and others don't. Here are a few examples. The five millimeter eyepieces were wonderful in the smaller telescopes like the 102 millimeter refractors but in my Dobsonian, they were a bit unruly. Even though 300 times magnification is within the Dobsonian's capabilities, it was much more comfortable to use the nine millimeter eyepiece at a more manageable 166 times magnification for those smaller targets. Lesson number three, quality matters a lot. When I first used the 24 millimeter Hyperion eyepiece, I was blown away by how good it was. And then I used it side by side with the 24 millimeter Telview and the view improved even more. Most seasoned stargazers have only two eyepieces that they use on a regular basis. And for me, I kept coming back to the 24 millimeter Panoptic and the nine millimeter Nagler. If I had to choose just two eyepieces out of all the eyepieces I've tested in this past few weeks, it would be these. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to get the most out of your stargazing experience. Don't forget to check out allstartelescope.com for all your stargazing needs. And remember, the future is looking up.